Good afternoon, this is Woodblock Printmaker Dave Bull here in our Asakusa shop, but not in my usual video seat out in the shop itself. I'm sitting at one of our printing desks, the one usually occupied by young Chihai Kanaru, and next to her sits Aimi Miyashita. They're both off today, but Aimi-san will be back tomorrow. She just finished up a run of 70 copies of the Yokai Draku print in our Ukiyo Hero series, and is ready for a new assignment. As you've already guessed, that assignment will be one of the block sets we received from the Doi Hanka Company. Now, we don't want to throw Aimi-san into the deep end of the pool right at the start, so we're going to begin with one of the smaller postcard size prints, the one I introduced in a previous video, Koitsu's little image of Kamigama Shrine in Kyoto. Now, that's a pretty simple image, you might think, but right off the bat, we're going to see that it is anything but. Here's the key block. If I compare it to the print, do you notice something a bit strange? Yes, this isn't the block for a single print. This set of blocks will make the design in pairs, two up in printing parlance. Now, this is all hand carved, line by line, on each and every one of these blocks. Why would they double the carving work like this? Well, of course, the reason is basic economics. Although it costs the publisher twice as much to get the block set ready once they're done, when it comes time to print, it's the other way around. For a printer to do a little print like this, or a double-sized print like this, is almost exactly the same amount of work. Cutting the paper, no difference. Mixing the pigments, preparation, of course, no difference. Rubbing them over the block, almost no difference. So for basically the same amount of effort from the printer, the publisher ends up with twice as many prints for sale. The extra carving cost was a one-time burden. The printing benefit goes on forever and ever. It's a no-brainer. Now, this is all very well when you're working with nice, fresh, new, cleanly carved blocks, but with blocks a half a century old, things start to get a bit more complicated. Let's look a bit closer at this key block. There's a few little splits here. I can actually see light through one place, and it's no longer flat. It has quite a crown. And once we start printing, the water and the pigment will expand that crown even farther. The right-hand copy of the image has little nicks and chips all over the place, and overall it really is quite heavily worn. Getting clean, stable images from this block alone is going to be quite a challenge for Aimi-san. And once the key printing is done, the fun really begins with the color blocks. The registration corner marks on the key block are pretty much clean. She can get the paper into those without much trouble. But look at the corresponding region on one of these color blocks. Whoa! How on earth is she going to get the paper into that corner? There is no corner. Are these blocks printable? You saw in the previous video how Doi-san and I inspected a number of the block sets in that garage and brought back a few that we felt were usable to make prints. Why on earth did I bring this set back? Because this is normal when dealing with older blocks. Our printers here, Kanai-san and Aimi-san, they've led very sheltered working lives so far. They've almost exclusively dealt with freshly carved blocks. I carve, pass to them, and they print. They are now about to find out what it's really like for a professional printer. A phone call from a publisher to a printer might go something like this. Hello, uh, hello, Mr. Printer. Yes, mm, yeah, this is a publisher. Hi, how are things going? I uh, know you got some time for a quick job. Ah, that's good to hear. Good. Uh, about three days, I think, for this one. Yeah, we need another 500 sheets of one of those little Koitsu snow scenes, you know, the two up. Yeah, yeah, you remember, yeah, yeah. We've had a sudden order from one of those steamship companies for a stack of place card settings, yeah. Uh, paper's okay. No, 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 we'll put the paper in, of course, of course. I'll pack it in together with the blocks. We can send it all over later this afternoon if you want, so you can get started tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. No, not so bad. They've been holding up pretty well. I know, you know, some of the registration marks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, of course. We've cut one of the sky blocks again since you guys last had this design. I know. Hopefully the new slope snowflakes will line up with the old ones, yeah. I, I don't have the number right here. I know, what did we pay last time? Four, 400? Are you sure? Oh, I thought this set ran at 300 per pair. Oh, okay, okay, I'll check with the accounting lady and see what it was, but uh, I, I think that's where it's gonna, st yep, yeah, yep, yeah, okay, all right. Good, okay, this is good to hear. Okay, I'll shoot the package off this afternoon. We'll look forward to the prints in a few days. Okay, yep, thank you. Okay, bye-bye, thank you. You get the idea. The publisher tried to pay as little as possible, get the job as done as quickly as possible, and wanted as little trouble as possible. The printer, he just wants the job. Disintegrating registration marks, it's all in a day's work. Anyway, this publisher's preparation is now done. Before she left yesterday, Aimi-san moistened some paper for tomorrow's printing. And when she gets back here in the morning, she'll study these blocks for a while, mix up some colors, swallow hard, and get to it. 
So here we are, ready to get going. Let's begin by asking Aimi-san her impressions of this project. Aimi-san, when you heard a few weeks ago about this project to get blocks from the toy company, what was your impression? デビットさんの作品にもあるいくつかあると思うんですけど、今回お話をもらえてすごい今楽しみだ楽しみにしてます。まあ、実際楽しみだなと思って、あの実際版業を取ってみたら、まあいろいろ問題があって、実際デビット
seen this before in our videos, you'll see it again, the famous beautiful pagoda and the sky tree in the background. Okay, here we are. It's Mikuji, it says. And this is, of course, the fortune. So we're going to pick a number and see what kind of a fortune we get for our upcoming project. We've put our 100 yen coin in the slot to pay for this, and aimi -san is shaking the tumbler. There's 100 sticks in there. Each one has a number on it. Which one is she going to get? Number 70. And corresponding drawer, she pulls out fortune number 70. And we can see right away, it's bad news. It even says clearly, bad fortune. Can you read this? The English is a bit mangled, but the gist is clear. Although you really hope to get fortune with earnest desire and work hard trying to get it, but the entrance is closed and you have nothing to do with it. Now, well, Amy-san was a bit downhearted here. She wasn't quite ready for this. <laughs> but help is at hand. What you're supposed to do with a fortune that you don't really want to keep and to take ownership of is you tie it onto one of those wires that's nearby. And the later the temple people will, who knows what they do with it, I don't know. So here she goes. I wasn't quite ready to let it end like that. And I remembered over in one corner of the temple grounds, there's a little instruction sheet that shows people what to do with these things. When you draw good fortune, you should not be careless and arrogant. But even if bad fortune, have no fear. Try to be modest and gentle. Whether in good or bad fortune, you should tenaciously do your best. And then I noticed something else. The very bottom line. Look at this. You can carve out your own fortune. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Aimi san then headed for the station to head home. She'll be back again tomorrow to continue this work. And for me, I'll head home and get started on this video editing.